Hi everyone, and welcome to the Knit California podcast. My name is Leslie, I'm a knitter, crocheter, spinner, pattern designer, and yarn enthusiast in Southern California, and this is my weekly podcast where we talk about all of my knitting projects that I'm working on, any spinning updates, what I'm designing lately, and in today's episode, we are going to be talking about <laughs> maybe a little finished object. Actually, two finished objects and all of the design progress that I've made on my alchemy pullover. So grab your knitting, grab something cozy to drink, and let's get into it. I'm so excited to be back with you for another podcast episode today. Um, today's podcast is really going to be a lot of details on my finished stripe pipe sweater, and then I will give you an update on my finished dew drops cowl, which we did talk about in last week's episode, but this is now blocked and ready to wear, so I wanted to give you those updates. And then lastly, I've got a couple updates on my alchemy pullover design that I'm working on. So I wanted to talk to you about all of that. Okay, let's get started with my stripe pipe sweater. This is my gorgeous stripe pipe sweater. The pattern is by Veronica Lindbergh. She's at Kutova Kika here on YouTube and also over on Instagram. And I finished it, you guys. It is done. It is blocked. It is on my body. It is 75 degrees outside, but I just had to wear it. I just had to put it on. I was wearing it yesterday and it was just like really cozy and comfortable all morning. And so I thought, you know what? If I can wear it yesterday, I can wear it today while I film the podcast. And then it will have to come off because it is supposed to be 91 degrees again today. Happy first day of fall. It's September 22nd, but it's 91 degrees outside. We did have some fall weather earlier this week, which was so lovely. I wore my Farnham sweater a couple days. I wore my California sweater a day, and I wore this yesterday, like I was saying, so that was really nice. But sounds like we've got another week full of hot, 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 so I'm gonna have to put these babies back in my closet. Anyways, the Stripe Pipe Sweater by Veronica Lindbergh. Okay, let me show you the yarn that I used for this. I mean, you can see it in the sweater, but this is an all over striped pullover. And the main color that I used, all of this yarn is from Dusty Yarn Co. And it's on their classic DK base, which is a 100% superwash merino yarn, 246 yards per 100 grams. So the main color that I use is this lovely light blue. It's called Dry Heat. And then I have five contrast colors that I used. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> they all are. So at the very top, we've got this pink, which is called Bachelorette. Next on the body is this blue called Reservation Only. On the bottom of the body is this yellow called Vintage. Then on the top of the sleeves, we've got Mid-Century, this lovely warm brown. And on the bottom of the sleeves, we have this green called Top Shelf. All of these colors are from the Palm Springs collection by Audrey from Dusty Yarn Co. And I just think they are so lovely together. When I saw this full collection, I was like, how am I supposed to choose what my favorites are? Oh wait, I don't really have to. Let's make a striped sweater. Let's make the stripe pipe. Let's get them all in here. But I just thought this was like a really fun way to see all of these colors together. Um, just want to say I purchased all of the yarn in this sweater even though I am an affiliate with Dusty Yarn Co. So if you're interested in shopping any of these colors or this collection, it is all still available on their website and you can click my affiliate link in the description box down below. Okay, let me give you some of the details about this pattern. So this pattern came out in May of 2023 and it is meant for a DK weight yarn. They gave is 20 stitches and 31 rows per 4 inches or 10 centimeters. The pattern tells you to use a 4 millimeter needle US 6 and a 3 millimeter US 2.5. 
the four uh yeah the four millimeters for the body and the smaller needle is for the twisted ribbing and this pattern comes in nine sizes from an extra small to a 5xl so the finished garment measurements bust circumference goes from a 35.5 to 70 inch bust circumference and the sweater is designed to have 8 to 12 inches of positive ease. So let me next talk to you about my version that I knit. Um, I'm pretty close to all of these measurements. I did not take measurements before and after blocking. Shoot. I need to do that right now actually so I can tell you the details. Hold. Okay, we just did a quick measure here right on the floor. So I knit the size extra large, which is meant to have a finished bust of 53 and a half inches. I ended up with a finished width of 26 inches. So 26 times two is 52 inches. So I'm a little bit short by an inch and a half, but that really doesn't matter. I mean, this, garment on me has about eight inches of positive ease and I think that's actually perfect. I'm really really happy with the way that this fits and that's exactly in the ease recommendation measurements for the pattern, eight to twelve inches of positive ease. So this is great. This is perfect. Um, my gauge did end up exactly right so in the pattern 20 stitches and 31 rows I ended up with 20 stitches and 31 rows so I'm not quite sure where that like extra inch and a half went I could have just blocked the body longer versus wider um, but again I'm totally fine with it my length of the sweater of the body from the underarm is 12.5 inches and my sleeve is 17.5 inches from the join. Um, I'm really happy with the sleeve length that I did on this. I have issues sometimes with knitting the sleeves long enough. I think I have relatively long arms just compared to the general population and so I usually need to knit my sleeves a little bit longer. But the instructions for the sleeves were really nice and I'll get into that in a, mi in a minute. The way that this sweater is knit and constructed is your typical drop shoulder construction. So you cast on for the back panel, there are no short rows, so it's just a rectangular back panel which is really nice. While you're doing all of these instructions, you are doing your stripes in equal increments, so that's something to keep in mind. While it is like a relatively like simple and easy construction, the stripes help add a little bit more variation and interest to the knitting. So you cast on for the back panel, you knit the whole back panel, then you're going to pick up stitches right here at the join. Can you see that? Yeah, right there. And then you're going to knit the front panel, doing some increases for the neck. You're going to pick up the other side and knit the other side front panel, doing increases for the neck. You're going to join the two front pieces at the neck, doing your under your backwards loop cast on here. And then you're going to finish knitting the front panel all the way down to the bottom of the armhole depth. You've got some cast on stitches right under the arm to join the front and back panel together and then you are knitting in the round until you reach your desired length and then you're doing a very long panel of half twisted rib. Only the knit stitch is twisted, the purl stitch is not twisted so that's why I say half twisted rib. I personally love twisted rib so I didn't have any issues going into this. The pattern, I believe, tells you to do three or four inches of twisted rib, and that is a lot of twisted rib. I started knitting this and had to take multiple breaks. Like, I was literally in the middle of the body hem twisted rib when I cast on and knit the entire first sleeve because I was just like... I can't do all of this right now. It's way too much. Um, but I eventually, like... To get over that, I tried the sweater on 
and I really looked at the proportion of like the full body to the ribbing hem. I was considering only doing about two inches of the twisted rib. That would have been about two stripes worth and I realized I really wanted it to be a little bit longer. So I thought I had knit to three inches of twisted rib but I just measured it now and it's sitting at about two and a half inches of twisted rib. So maybe that shrunk a little bit in blocking. I don't know. Um, but I like, you know, tried it on, looked at it, decided how many more rows I needed to knit, put my row counter, set it to the number of rows I needed to keep going, and just did it. Um, and one of the other really fun parts about the edging, the ribbing of um, all of the extremities of this sweater is the little pop of color. So you can see on the neckband there's a green, on the sleeves I did pink, and on the bottom I did do the brown that's the same as the sleeve up here. The pattern doesn't actually tell you to do it on the bottom hem, but I was like all of the other ribbing gets a fun little pop of color, so I did it on the bottom as well. Um, after you knit the full body, then you pick up and knit the sleeves. They are tapered sleeves, so there's some decreases along the way. And then again, you've got about three inches of twisted rib on the cuffs here. The instructions for the sleeve are really interesting because after you do the last contrast color stripe, the pattern tells you, okay, try it on and see if you need a full main color stripe before you go into your ribbing and decide how much ribbing you want to knit. So I tried it on, realized I needed a full main color stripe and I needed the full three inches to get the sleeves to the length that I wanted them to be. And then lastly, the pattern tells you to pick up and knit the twisted rib neckband and it's just a single layer collar it's not folded over anything and I think it looks great I actually picked up the neckband while I was knitting the body so I like knit part of the body put it on hold did the neckband then finished part of the body, then did a sleeve, then finished the body, then did the other sleeve. So I definitely played around with it. Um, there was a point where I was just like, let me get to the sleeve so that I can see all of the colors also in my sweater. And that was really fun. The different stripes definitely make this a potato chippy project where like you want to keep going because you're like, okay, it's only like eight rounds or whatever per stripe. So I can do that and I can get to the next one really quickly. And then as soon as you get to the next one, you want to get to the next one and so on and so forth. And then like once you're at like the third stripe in a, in a sequence, you're like, oh, let me get in so I can add in the next color. So this is just like a crazy addictive project and I had so much fun with it. I'm really happy with the fit like I talked about. I'm really happy with this yarn, um, the classic DK base from Dusty Yarn Co. is really, really soft and this washed and blocked really, really well. It's like lightweight, it's not heavy, and it's just really nice to wear. So I would highly, highly, highly recommend this project. I have more stripe pipe sweaters that I want to knit. I would love to knit a scrappy one where maybe every stripe is a different color um, from some of my yarn scraps in my stash. I would love to knit, I don't know. I've got a decent number of single skeins back there. I could probably put, you know, some random crazy colors together um, to make this look really good. I wanted to talk also a little bit about color placement. So I really focused a lot when I was first planning this out on which colors I was going to have and like, like which colors I was going to have on top and closer to my face and then which colors were going to be towards the bottom. So I ultimately decided that I wanted to have this pink bachelorette closest to my face because both the main color and this pink color are in my soft summer color palettes and so I knew I wanted that to be closest to my face. It would make me look good. Uh, a couple of the other colors for example 
specifically the yellow and the brown are more warm tone colors and are not really in my palette so if I had these closer to my face it wouldn't have looked as good a couple of the other colors in here the shoot just dropped it sorry buddy the blue and the green these also could have been really nice right next to my face um, because these are both like in my color palette as well and I think that's also one of the reasons I put the green right here because even though it's just like a little strip I probably could have put the brown and the yellow up here and it would have been fine but I was like let's just go full all of my soft summer colors right here so it'll make me look as best as possible and then the yellow is on the bottom so it's far enough away but it like I think the yellow really adds to the color palette and brings out a brightness and the brown really just ties everything together so I'm really happy with that color placement I mean this could have looked totally different if I had put the colors in a different order um, I also put the darkest blue like right in the middle so that it's broken up by like a lighter pink and the brighter yellow and the green like farthest away from the blue so that they weren't too similar next to each other I don't know I'm just really happy with like the color placement on this as well it's really really good one of the modifications that I made and I think this is the last thing is for the contrast color um, edge details the pattern tells you to do one row and then bind off and for all of them I did two rows and then I bound off and I did a sewn bind off for all of my bind offs just because that's pretty much what I always do now especially if it's a one by one rib and I think it just adds like a little bit more to that pop of color one extra row um, and I really really like it so that is my stripe pipe sweater I am so pleased with it I can't wait to wear this all fall and winter long and yeah I hope you guys will put this one on your queue because it was a really really fun pattern it took me let's see I cast this on July 23rd and I finished it on September 18th so that is a little bit of time uh, I was working on as you know a lot of other projects at the same time so I think if you were only working on this like you could knit this up really really fast this is a really quick and like simple classic knit and with the stripes like I mentioned before so fast no time so that's my stripe pipe okay I love it so much I'm gonna keep wearing it for the rest of the episode but we've got to move on and talk about my next finished object my dewdrops cowl okay so this is my dew drops cowl test knit that I am test knitting for Rachel at Rachel is knitting and last week I showed you that this was done but it wasn't blocked and now it is blocked so I am happy to tell you that it is blocked and it looks fantastic so let's try it on. Let me show you what this looks like wearing it. Again, I've never really worn cowls before, so I'm just kind of going off what the picture of Rachel looks like. But I think it goes like this. Okay, that's actually really cute. I like this. Okay. There we go. Okay, look how cute that is. Okay, so let me give you the details about this pattern. This pattern is still in testing and it is set to come out at the beginning of October. And while I tested the DK weight version cowl, there's also a worsted weight cowl version. And there's also a headband, a matching headband, both in DK and worsted weight. So a lot of different options here, a lot going on, which is really fantastic. So the Dewdrops cowl, as Rachel says, is a confident beginner pattern with an easily repeatable four stitch lace pattern. It is named the Dewdrop cowl because the eyelid and the lace look like little dewdrops running down a blade of grass and I just think that's so cute and so special and it's so fun and then there are two sections of two by two rib to round out the uh, top and the bottom of the cowl 
So let me get you my notes. I did do finished before and after measurements of this. Um, so my unblocked width of this cowl was 12 inches for a full circumference of 24 inches. And my blocked width pretty much stayed the same. I knew when I set this up to block, I had um, set up my pins on my blocking boards where I wanted it to be. So I didn't change the length at all or the width at all. I was really focused on the length. And so my unblocked length was about seven and a half inches. I really stretched this in blocking because the pattern calls for a length of 9.25 inches. But when I just measured this today, it's sitting at about 8.25 inches. So it it bounced back a little bit um, after blocking, after I took it off the blocking boards and it's been sitting for about a week now. Um, so it's longer than it was previously, but not quite as long as it should be. But, I mean, it's fine. It's a cowl, like it, it does its little bunching up thing when you're wearing it, so I don't think there's really gonna be any issue with it. So, the yarn that I used for this is the Sorella Yarn Classic Sock Base in the Colorway Central Perk. This is a 100% superwash merino wool, 400 yards per 100 grams. So I knit the DK weight version of this, which means I was holding this yarn double, uh, two strands of fingering weight. I caked up my yarn and I pulled a strand from the outside and from the inside at the same time to knit this. And because this skein was only 400 yards, I was playing yarn chicken at the end. I got through the whole beginning two by two rib section. I got through the whole lace section and then the very last two by two rib section, I had to cut short. I only was able to do about four rows. Then I started the bind off and I didn't have enough yarn to complete the bind off. I had to switch to a very similar color in a different yarn to finish that. So I told Rachel what happened and she was like, oh my God. <laughs> It's fine, um, but basically you need a little bit more than 50 grams of DK weight yarn to complete this So just as an FYI and if you had a Fingering weight skein that was like a regular fingering weight versus like a heavy fingering weight So if your skein has like 436 yards, I do think you would have been able to finish this um, or I would have been able to finish this. I just of course happened to pick a skein that only had 400 yards so Anyways, it'll be fine. It is fine. I'm really excited to wear this all around Ireland Rachel and I are gonna match in our little cowls and it's gonna be so fun. So that is my finished Dewdrops cowl and I love it. It's so cute. Okay, that is it for my finished objects in terms of whips, I have been working on my self-striping sock, but I've really only made like this much progress, so I'm not going to show that to you today. What I have been working on like a lot this week is my alchemy pullover. So I want to talk to you about all of the progress and backwards progress and forwards progress that I have made on this. <laughs> Okay, so last week I showed you this full back panel and it was on the blocking boards, remember? It was like looking all crazy. Well, I had this sitting on the blocking boards for a while and then I finally was ready to pick up stitches and I started picking up the stitches. Let me see if you can see this. And I really just wasn't happy with how this looked. I felt like the edge detail stitch from the back panel was really lost from this pickup stitch. Like the purl stitches are supposed to sit back a little bit, but the way that I did this, it just looks like it goes straight from the purl stitches into the pickup from the front panel. And it wasn't like, the edge detail stitch wasn't popping as much as I wanted it to be. And so with that combined with the <laughs> unsymmetrical uh, make one right and make one left issue, I decided to start the back panel over again. So 
This is actually like not even attached to anything. I took it off the needles. These are just live stitches. At some point I might frog this, um, but I figured I would just leave it for now. I also have this test swatch. What is this? Oh, this was one of my, this is still connected to, <laughs> okay, so after I decided to start over, um, I think I have started over maybe 10 times at this point. First, I was really trying to figure out my increases. So I was doing make one right, make one left increases, and I was getting that gap with the make one left increases. So I did some research, I asked on Instagram, and people were like, why don't you try a lifted increase? Why don't you try a knit front back? Why don't you try twisting your stitches? Why don't you try, you know, all these things. So I had a whole list of different ways that I wanted to try out um, my edge details and my increases. So this was one of my last attempts um, where I was really close to getting what I wanted and I just decided, you know what, let me just crank up a fresh skein, start fresh, and knit the back panel in a way that I think is really going to work. So I did that. This really helped me figure out what I was doing. Okay, so that's two. <laughs> two pieces and I have a full third back panel here now. This was my full skein of yarn that I started with yesterday, no two days ago, and now the back panel is fully done again and I've actually made progress on the front panels as well and I have joined the front neck in the round. I need to actually try this on before I go much further to make sure I have done the front sections to like the length that I'm happy with um, but I'm really happy with the back panel so let me show you what this looks like now including with the pick up for the front panel. Okay, there it is. So I feel like this edge stitch is really defined and here's the pick up for the front panel with this twisted rib stitch right here. It just like looks really clean. It's like separated. It doesn't come straight out of the pearls and this is looking really, really good. You can see there's, you know, still a little, a little holy detail here from the increases, but it's mirrored on the other side. So, not an issue if it's mirrored on the other side. That's just the design detail that it is, okay? Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm so glad. <laughs> that I was able to figure that out. I was getting really frustrated with myself and just with these increases not working, but I'm at the point now where it's okay. It's gonna be okay. Maybe I should, should I put this on, try it on tubing and try it on right now? I think I should. Give me a sec. Okay, I've put this on tubes, so. Okay, and I literally just did the cast on stitches here. I haven't even done any other stitches yet, so I don't know if this is going to be a great try on. Okay, so that is, get a little closer here. That is where I want this back detail stitch to sit, right on the back shoulder. So then we've got a straight section that comes up, and then we've got the increases here. I think this is looking pretty good. There is, it is gonna have a similar shape, similar sizing actually to the stripe pipe sweater that I'm wearing right now. Uh, maybe not quite as much positive ease, and 
but the yarn is the same. I'm using the exact same yarn. The Dusty Yarn Co. Classic DK Weight Base. This is the color, by the way, HRH HGH, and it's also available on Dusty Yarn Co.'s website right now. Link in the description box down below. Sorry, there's people walking around outside. Um, okay, yeah, actually, this is looking really good. I think I need to do a few more rows here just to, like, make sure I'm good with the way this is fitting. And then go from there. Yeah, I mean, I think this is looking pretty good. Okay. It is really hard to tell with where it's at right now, but I'm pleasantly enjoying it. So, look, red is really not one of my soft summer colors, okay? But, if Taylor Swift can wear it, I can wear it. I'll just put on more makeup and it'll be fine. Um, so anyways, that's the progress on my Alchemy pullover. I'm skeptical to say it, but I'm like really trying to finish this sample before Ireland so I can wear it in Ireland. I'm not putting pressure on myself though to get it done. Like in the back of my mind, I'm like, let's go as fast as possible. But in the front of my mind, I'm like, take your time, rip something out if you need it to be ripped out. But like once I have the pattern like set and like it's written in my spreadsheet I'm like okay knit as fast as we can and then I get to the next section and I'm like okay let's figure out the math let's make sure it looks good and then knit as fast as we can <laughs> um at this point from today I'm a little bit less than two weeks away from leaving for Ireland so I'm really really excited really really looking forward to it I do think it's possible like I can knit a sweater in two weeks like if it's the only thing I'm working on, which right now this is really my only like main active whip. I've got my socks as like my side whip, but I'm really holding off from casting on anything else because I really want to focus on this and get as much of it done as possible. So it's fun and yeah, I'm just really excited about everything going on right now in Nick California land. So, okay. That's my alchemy pullover. That's all of the knitting chat for today. Um, like I said, Ireland is coming up. It's just like this massive event that I'm looking forward to. I'll be gone for about two weeks. I am planning to have regular uploads while I'm gone. They're not gonna be all podcast videos. They're gonna be um, different types of videos. So just stay tuned for all of that. And then when I do get back from Ireland, we're gonna have the recap vlogs. So I'm really excited for that as well. I think that's all I have for you today. So before I go, I just wanna give you a couple reminders and updates. First of all, a really, really huge thank you for all of the love and all of the support on the California sweater. My latest video that actually went live on Saturday earlier this week um, is a video all about the California sweater details. So I go over the sizing, the yarn, the knitting experience, the inspiration. So if you are not sure, if you wanna knit the California sweater and want a little bit more info about it, you can go check out that. It's like a quick 13 minute video um, with all of the details there. The launch has been going really well and I'm really happy with it. So again, thank you for all of your support on that sweater. To close out today's video, I just wanted to remind you that in the description box down below, there are details for all of the projects that I talked about today, including pattern links to Ravelry and all of the yarn details and links to websites. Nick California is on Facebook. All of my posts 
posts and reels that I post on Instagram are automatically cross-posted over to Facebook. So if you don't have an Instagram but you do have a Facebook and would love to follow along with what I'm working on, you can go search for the Nick California page over on Facebook and like and follow me there. Lastly, I am on a journey to reach 10k subscribers here on YouTube. So if you're not subscribed to the channel and you really enjoyed today's video, I would love it if you can click that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and I will see you on the next one. Bye!